to be here to welcome you all here today with the an especially warm welcome to our governor uh, Maura Healy, our EEA Secretary Tepper, and our EEA, EPA Deputy Administrator Janet McCabe. And I also want to acknowledge our amazing state rep, Marjorie Deckers, who is here as well, former Vice Mayor. We have state rep Steve Owens, and we have state rep Mike Connolly. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for being in Cambridge to highlight the work that's happening at the federal, state, and local level with the Climate Pollution Reduction Grants Program. We're proud in Cambridge to be leaders in environmental justice, and Finch stands out as an example of what's needed in our city, state, and country. Finch is designed with the goal of addressing two crises, the climate crisis and the housing crisis. It has nearly 100 affordable units and is one of the most efficient buildings in the entire state. As someone who grew up in affordable housing right down the street at the Ringe Towers, I know exactly how meaningful every single one of these units is to the families that live in them. It's also an example of the collaboration that's needed in our collective effort to address these pressing issues. Housing organizations, architects, climate programs, city and state staff have all worked together to ensure this project was a success. And there's real urgency here. And when we get projects like French right, it means we can do it again and over and over. Not just to reduce emissions and provide housing in Cambridge, but across the state and country as well. It's so encouraging to know that we have leaders like our governor so committed to this fight. And I'm so grateful to her and her team for all that they're doing. And I'm so pleased to have them here in Cambridge to highlight their important work and their approach to the climate action and environmental justice. So let's continue to build on the ideas that make made French a uh, success. And so thank you so much and welcome to Cambridge. Mm -hmm. thank you so much, oh my goodness. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. What a day. What a gorgeous Cambridge day. What a gorgeous Commonwealth day. I'm David Cash. I'm the regional administrator uh, for uh, EPA Region 1. That's the six New England states and the te 10 federally recognized tribes. Thank you so much. Mayor Siddiqui for, uh, where, where, where she go? Oh, there you go, for, uh, for hosting us here and for welcoming us here and for putting the point on why it's so important what we're doing today and announcing the Climate Pollution Reduction Grant uh, program that Massachusetts is undoubtedly going to lead in, even though all 50 states around the country are involved and the territories are involved. So super exciting uh, to be here. And of course, the city of Cambridge has been a leader in climate policy and implementation, so thank you for that leadership. Always serves as a pilot. I always, um, I travel a lot around New England, and um, I think it's always too important to acknowledge that no matter where you are in New England, you're on land uh, that was uh, uh, occupied by communities of native tribes who, uh, who uh, took care of the water, took care of the land, took care of the air, and um, if that's something that we can be doing in some small part, that's really, really important. And I just want to make that acknowledgement. Of course, uh, we are here to, to celebrate exactly doing that, but in a much more uh, robust way than has ever been done before in this country. Uh, we are investing in America in so many ways. Congress has passed the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, giving EPA $110 billion to invest in our communities, to invest in children's health, to invest in electric school buses, to invest exactly in buildings like this building, wonderful places to live that emit less, that are healthier for the people who live here. And this is particularly exciting for me to be here today. I spent 10 years in Massachusetts state government working uh, with incredible teams. Some of those folks are here right now on Clean Energy Climate Plan of 2010, on the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. And so it is phenomenal to see Governor Healy, you and your team. I see Secretary Tepper here and Secretary Fiandaka here. Transportation, environment, and energy at the same table, that's tremendous. And what you are doing here is taking the work that has gone on in this Commonwealth and in the country, and you are bringing it next level. There's no question about it. Transforming our 
communities, transforming our economies, innovating, creating jobs in fundamental, fundamental ways. Uh, so it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, the state reps have been acknowledged. They're always phenomenal partners. We have our congressional delegation representatives here as well. as Elizabeth Rosario is here representing Senator Warren. Just raise your hand. Katie Morphill is here from Senator Markey's office and Wade Blackman from Congresswoman Clark's office. Thank you so much for all of your work. Please take back to them that the gratitude that you have here for the passage of those two bills and many others is just huge. Uh, so it's, a, it's an honor for, for me to uh, introduce the governor in her first five months. She's already a national leader in so many spaces, but climate change and clean energy is one of those. She gets that it's not just an environmental protection issue. She gets it's about transportation. She gets it's about innovation. She gets it's about job growth, entrepreneurship, energy costs. It's about housing urban and rural opportunities. It's about our kids' health. And what ties all of that together is justice and equity. And she gets that it's about empowering communities and making sure the benefits of the clean energy future finally get to those communities that are overburdened and marginalized. She gets that it's about investing in Massachusetts just like it's investing in America. So let me give you Governor Healy. Well, thank you so much, David, and uh, welcome to, to, to Cambridge, welcome to, to Massachusetts, though you need no introduction because you never left. And while you are the administrator for the EPA for this great New England region, we're very, very proud to call you one of our own and look forward to the continued partnership between our administration and the Biden administration on so, so many fronts. Um, and thank you as well, Mayor Siddiqui, for welcoming us to this great city of Cambridge where so much is so often pioneered and tested. It's appropriate that we be here today to our elected officials who are working very hard day in and day out to move uh, families and, and a better way of life forward here in Massachusetts and to make sure that Massachusetts is the leader when it comes to climate, when it comes to so much. Representatives Marjorie Decker, Steve Owens, Mike Conley. I also see Senator Brownsberger um, has joined us as well. And I appreciate representation from the federal delegation. We've got a tremendous federal delegation working hard to help make things possible, um, like the funding that we're going to talk a little bit about today. I know we also have regional planning leaders from MAPC, as well as local officials from Boston, Worcester, and other municipalities. I'm also delighted to be joined by members of our team, the Healy Driscoll Administration, our Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper, Transportation Secretary, Gina Fiadaka, uh, Quentin Palfrey, our Director of Federal Funds and Infrastructure here, uh, is here, and our Undersecretary, uh, Monica tibbets nutt is also here from Transportation. Um, as you can see, you know, from our perspective, this all does tie together as, as the Administrator just mentioned, and it's why we have transportation alongside environment and energy, alongside our federal funding and infrastructure, because this all ties to and must work together. We're honored, uh, in particular, to have with us here today our EPA Deputy Administrator, Janet McCabe, who we welcome back to Massachusetts. She is um, the product of, of Massachusetts education also worked in the Attorney General's office, also worked in state administration um, at multiple levels, and now is uh, got a very, very big job with the EPA. And so we're delighted that you have chosen to come to Massachusetts. Of all the states you could visit to tout what is a really important program, and this is a big deal. The Biden administration investing in America, this is a big deal. We are talking about billions and billions of dollars that are going to get us where we need to be in terms of addressing needed change for our infrastructure, creating jobs, and also addressing our climate needs. It is super, super significant. And again, I just want to uh, appreciate all that the Biden administration is doing, including the uh, administration's program that we're going to talk about today, the Climate Pollution Reduction Grants Program. 
I am delighted that Massachusetts will, of course, be participating. We've already qualified for a $3 million planning grant to help us make sure that we are making climate smart investments from the Berkshires to the Cape. We're forging a new path in our energy and environmental leadership, and we're taking truly a whole of government approach, which is also what the Biden Harris administration is doing. We plan to create working groups across our cabinet and beyond to address economy wide decarbonization. We'll also coordinate on the local level. Now, the impacts of climate change look different community to community. So, we're engaging with our municipal leaders to capitalize on this historic funding uh, that we're seeing and the opportunities that we have for funding from the, from the government, including tax credits, grant programs, appliance rebates, and more. We're not reinventing the wheel entirely. We're deploying our groundbreaking flagship programs, like here in the state, our Green Communities Program and the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program, to work with cities and towns on climate action. Just last month, uh, my administration announced the launch of the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness 2.0 program, which will really help our cities and towns with their resiliency planning. We're also using existing environmental justice forums to comprehensively engage with black, brown, and low-income communities around the state. But this isn't just another ordinary grant program. The grant program that we are talking about today is a big deal. This is unprecedented funding that is coming from the Biden administration and Congress for important, incredibly important and timely investments. Biden's um, Inflation Reduction Act and the entire Investing in America agenda is something that we are working hard to chase and take advantage of here in Massachusetts. And that's on top of everything else that we're doing in Massachusetts to leverage this funding through important and bold and strong policy and partnerships across all levels of government and, importantly, the private sector. This moment is, uh, in fact, a decisive historic turn towards achieving a carbon-free economy, one that delivers affordability, a high quality of life, and economic opportunity for everyone. And we're here today highlighting Finch Cambridge because it's a great example of what we can accomplish. This is a success story built on local, state, and federal partnership and community partnership. These are 100% affordable, high-quality, energy-efficient homes. They reduce our carbon footprint, and they make people's lives better. And I want to thank Sarah and the team here for showing us uh, all of what is possible and in practice right now. And of course, we want to thank and welcome shortly Delphine, who is uh, here at Finch Cambridge and telling us a little bit more about what environmental justice and community leadership actually look like. Uh, I've said for a long time that climate action means opportunity here in Massachusetts. I think this kind of challenge brings out the very best in our state through innovation, through teamwork. We work together to find solutions. And, you know, I'm proud that in the early days we announced our country's first ever climate chief, Melissa Hoffer, who's making sure that we drive a climate agenda across every single department and agency. We proposed in a budget significant investments and in funding related to climate. We're competing hard uh, for every federal dollar that's out there so that we're able to put our best foot forward. And we want Massachusetts to work with the Biden administration and really leading us to where we need to go with tremendous urgency. So again, I want to thank our local leaders for their partnership. Um, I want to thank Deputy Administrator McCabe for being here and for the grant program. And I promise that if given the chance, uh, you will see a great return on investment uh, working with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And with that, I welcome EPA Deputy Administrator Janet McCabe. So I'm tempted to say what she said. Um, <laughs> But I won't. <laughs> uh, thank you, Governor, um, and thanks to everybody and to the Commonwealth for inviting me here today. Um, as the Governor said, I, I have roots here. I sort of feel like I've put on my favorite old sweater. 
Um, that's how I feel when I cross the border. Um, uh, but so proud to be representing the Biden-Harris administration and joining you in this incredible announcement. Uh, Massachusetts truly is a leader, always has been, and, and is certainly a leader now. Thank you, Governor, for the climate team that you've put together. Um, I think that's just, it's just awesome. You, you're, uh, you have an incredible leader in Melissa Hoffer. I got to work with her for a couple years um, at EPA, and um, she's amazing. Um, so she's going to be a great leader for you to have here, um, uh, and, and you will do great things with her. Um, also wonderful to be joined today and to have met um, the uh, Secretary of uh, Energy and Environment, Rebecca Tepper, um, and Transportation, Gina Fiondaka. Um, I, I love meeting state officials, given that I have that history myself, um, and actually my time spent in, in state offices um, was some of the best times of my professional life. Um, and thank you, Mayor, also for welcoming us here to Cambridge. Um, I've lived at various places in your city, um, uh, but a long, long time ago. So we're, we're here to celebrate the historic Inflation Reduction Act. Um, all told, that act provides an unprecedented $370 billion flowing to communities all across the country. Um, and EPA is responsible for about $40 billion of those dollars to focus on the climate crisis, to decrease energy costs, to boost our economy, create local jobs, and advance environmental justice. These are all things that matter to President Biden and Vice President Harris and Administrator Regan and to all of us at EPA, and we plan to deliver. We plan to work with our, our fellow uh, agencies in the federal government, the Department of Energy, the Department of the Interior, the Department of Transportation, HUD, any agency you can think of is all in and on the team, on the Biden-Harris team, to work on climate change as we accomplish our responsibilities and to take advantage of, um, people call it a once-in-a-generation opportunity. I actually think it's more than once-in-a-generation. The last time the country invested this much in our infrastructure was in the Eisenhower administration. So how many people were around during the Eisenhower administration? Not many. Okay, one. You win. You win. Um, and as the governor said, truly investing in climate planning and implementation, mitigation, and resilience is investing in America. And we're doing it every step of the way, thinking about every single person who lives in this country. Um, especially the people whose communities have not been at the table, their voices have not been heard, they have not been the recipients of grants and loans and programs like this. And the President is committed that we will get those people to the table and give them that opportunity. So we are so pleased to be partnering uh, with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts on, on this program. And I know that you will be one of the leading states, I'm just, I'm just confident. So just a little bit more about this program. Um, it has two parts. So in March, we announced $250 million in non-competitive planning grants. That means that any state that wanted to put up their hand for $3 million could put up their hand and get $3 million. And then for large metropolitan areas, of which there are many across the country, some of them are bigger than some of our states, in fact, um, uh, and tribal governments and territories, they can put up their hand too. And also, if all they have to do is say, we're going to do this, and they get money to work on a climate plan. Now, some states, like Massachusetts, kind of already had one, right? You were already working on it. So this is an opportunity for uh, Massachusetts and other states that are a little bit ahead to take a look at those plans and really focus on, okay, what are we going to implement out of this plan? Because, wait for it, the second part of this grant is more than $3 billion to actually pay for the kinds of projects that states municipalities, territories, and tribes will never be able to find the money to pay for. Significant delivery of distributed residential solar, for example. Significant investment in clean energy infrastructure. Significant investment in the types of exciting, innovative agricultural programs where there's so much opportunity to, to mitigate carbon emissions and also make our food supply um, more resilient. Um, this is what a law like the Inflation Reduction Act can do. 
<coughs> excuse me. So we're getting states and municipalities in the door for this first phase. 47 states put up their hands. That's incredible. And later this year, we'll be putting out information about um, how to get in line for the big money, which will be competitive. So states and, and, and cities and tribes and territories will have to put together programs that show how they are going to be investing in communities, how they're going to be stimulating local economies, creating good paying jobs in the community, dealing with other issues like energy affordability, housing uh, supply, and focusing on those underserved communities, and also how they're going to take those federal dollars from the IRA and from this program and magnify them. And the governor mentioned this is not the only game in town, even from the federal government. So we want people to be looking at the other opportunities from other federal pots of money and putting those together when you can really, really make a difference. So we're excited to be working at the state level. We'll also be working with Boston, Hartford, Providence, Bridgeport, Worcester, and New Haven. Um, these are great cities in a great part of the country, and they are all in, too. You guys are particularly well-suited to make the most of this program with your your um, your your um, personnel, your infrastructure, your organizational infrastructure, that's the way I should say it, already in place and more than ready to go. In fact, you're moving IRA or not, and this will um, be able to uh, make it easier for you to move forward faster and further. We know that across the country, climate change is taking a toll. New England has its own experience. I get to go to other places in the country the West is on fire. The middle of the country is drying up or flooding. I have a hydrologist friend who says, people never think about water unless there's too much or too little. Um, and we have both of that, both of those things at the same time. But plans that are being developed or will be developed in Nevada, in Missouri, in Montana, in, I've got to, got to not mention a state that didn't say yes, um, uh, in Texas, in Washington State, in California, um, in Washington, D.C., these plans are going to help us address climate pollution directly. They're going to help businesses remain competitive in this new clean energy world that we are in. It is going to spur economic growth and create jobs in communities all across the country. We're going to be able to plan for workforce needs, and the federal government is ready to help any state who wants help with that do it. Um, it is going to, and this is one of my favorite ones, honestly, given my background, all along the way there are going to be substantial public health benefits. When you do these things to reduce carbon emissions, you reduce particulate matter. You reduce ozone in our communities, which means you reduce asthma attacks. You reduce premature deaths. You reduce heart attacks. And again, who is suffering most? from air pollution, water pollution, and polluted, contaminated uh, sites in their communities. It's those marginalized communities that are now being brought to the table, thanks to, to President Biden. So we are there. We are poised. We are moving as fast as we can. If we set deadlines that seem like you'd like a little more time, I'm sorry. I'll just say, I'll just say sorry right now, um, because we are all on the clock not the election clock, we are on the climate clock, the planetary clock, um, and we are motivated to move forward. So thank you so much, uh, Governor Healy. Thanks to everybody. I know that Massachusetts will serve as an example to the rest of the country. I look forward to being back here again many times. Um, uh, one of the, the biggest thing that draws me to Massachusetts um, are two little people that are two years old and less than that. So I want their future in Boston to be a safe and healthy one, um, and I want to see them grow up, grow up in that. So thank you all so much, and I will turn the program back to my colleague. Thank you so much, Deputy Administrator McCabe. It's always so wonderful to have you uh, here in Region 1. You know, there are statutes and there are laws and regulations and there are grant programs, but at the end of the day, all of this work is about people, people and their communities and their homes and their, uh, their relationships and their kids. And uh, so it's, I think it's just always fundamental to hear those voices 
and, uh, and we're lucky enough to have a member of the Finch Cambridge community. Um, and before I call her up, I just wanted to note, we have talked about cost savings and innovation. Um, I was talking to Vonda Mendez, who's the property manager here. Vonda, are you? Raise your hand. I was talking to her earlier. So the utility bills here, 30 to $50 a month. That's like a third or less of what a regular apartment would cost here. That's huge. And the waiting list here is 1,800. This is a 90 unit, 98 unit, 18. So what does that mean? That means we have to build so many more of these kinds of communities. Energy efficient, beautiful, light, airy, wonderful places to live. And we're lucky enough to have someone here with us today, Delfina Masongo, who is a resident here. She's been a community advocate, a health advocate. She's worked on HIV AIDS in both her home country of Kenya and here. She's an interpreter and speaks uh, her native Swahili. She came here and has become a U.S. citizen in 2019. And it's, uh, she is still incredibly engaged here. She's on the board of the Cambridge Neighborhood Apartment Housing Services. And most important, she's a member of this community. Delfina Masongo. Governor Healy, Mayor Siriki, it's a great honor to welcome you all to Cambridge uh, Finch Apartments. I'm just so touched that it's me representing the organization. I moved from Kenya in 2008, and as they've said, I became a U.S. citizen in 2019. I got uh, a notification in 2020 that I have been approved for an apart apartment in Finch, and it was during COVID, and I was just scared of change because I had lived in one apartment for like eight years, and I was like, no, I, uh, okay. So, and that time there was like... Um, distance, uh, uh, nobody was going to any office, so I was forced to go to the office to see a video of the building, and what I saw, I was like, I gotta go to this apartment. <laughs> there, was, there was a dishwasher, there was walk-in closet, and there was a lot of space. So I was motivated to come and, and live here. So I moved here in September, and it's been a safe, beautiful, and spacious space for me. Uh, where I continue with my journey. The building has large windows that let in uh, natural light all day, so you really don't need light. That's why the, the electric bills are slightly low. And then we have the temperatures uh, in the summer, they are cool, and the winter we have nicely in, insulated uh, apartments. Residents also have the option of using the elevator or use the stairs to encourage exercise. And we also have this roof deck, very nice place to come and just hang out and uh, uh, enjoy the view. And we have the laundry room here, we have the kitchen, we have the outdoor spaces which also are pet friendly. This is a, an, an, a place where pets are allowed, so people go outside to, to mingle and hang out with their pets. Also, because of the location, we have the bus stop right outside here. Uh, the red line is 20 minutes walk. We have the mall, which is like eight minutes walk from here. We have the golf course for those who like to, you know. <laughs> and then we have the Fresh Pond Reserve tra Reservation Trail for people who like to jog or to walk or to run. And, of course, the bike paths for those who like to bike. And there are a few parks here where people go and relax. Also, uh, the residents also benefit from um, an on-site resident coordinator. She helps with distribution of food and, uh, you know, any other social services that are needed with the clients. And also, she uh, plans activities and programs that are geared towards building and engaging the community. Um, that's all I've got to say for today, and thank you all for coming. Well, that, that wraps up this, but I, I, uh, the, the major speaking, but I just wanted to kind of summarize. You know, I, I heard from, uh, from the mayor multiple, multiple ways that there are benefits from moving in this kind of direction. Your leadership has been, been wonderful in that, in that regard. And I, 
heard from, uh, I just wrote down kind of words that stuck in my head from, the, from Governor Healy, opportunity, bold, decisive, partnerships, all incredibly important as we move forward in this. And I, and I hear, uh, Ms. Masongo, from you, just a description of the community of who would not want to be in a space like this with transportation and pets and kids and open, beautiful rooms. Um, this is the clean energy future. What we're here today witnessing is the clean energy future and the climate uh, pollution reduction grants and the state partnerships we have in leveraging the fe other federal dollars from the Department of Energy and transportation, et cetera, is going to help get us there. And we know that the Commonwealth is going to be a beacon uh, nationally for how to do this right. So with that, we'll end. We'll take some questions from the media only on this, uh, on this program, um, and then we'll uh, end the program. So thank you very much, all of you. So the bipartisan infrastructure law is an enacted law. The Inflation Reduction Act is an enacted law. Um, the administration is moving forward, and um, there's no suggestion that the, those laws are going to be repealed. So we're moving forward. Wait, there's one. I'm sorry. There was a question back here. You can't see. Barbara Moran. From the Well, um, you know, part of what we need to do, Barbara, is make really smart investments. And my job is to work with local officials, with state colleagues, with federal colleagues, and with private industry so that we're really leaning into and making the most strategic and smart investments that we can make that will help us achieve the climate goals that our legislature wisely and boldly set, and to do so in a way that creates jobs, creates opportunity, addresses environmental injustices. For the first time in history, we have an administration that has put forward incredible amounts of funding and program opportunities that we can now take advantage of to help us make those smart decisions. So the $3 million is needed because to, to do that analysis and to think through. Remember, this is a climate plan for the entire state. You know, we're talking from Williamstown out to Provincetown. So to cover the entire state, to do the kind of analysis that we need to do, to do the engagement with our metropolitan planning councils and, and others across the board, it just requires all the stakeholder meetings, discussions. It requires that, that kind of funding to, to get it done. I think it's uh, really excited. And it also, you know, part of it is, as the deputy administrator said, this is just the first step. This is helping us put together plans that we can then go to the administration with as we compete, as we apply for this federal funding. I have said for a long time now, this is about Massachusetts playing to win, about us competing for federal funds. And that's the reason I, I brought in a director of federal funds who's working across the board, cross secretariat, so that we are putting our best foot forward in terms of winning the ability to compete and then win those funding opportunities. And the deputy mentioned that, you know, the whole Biden-Harris administration's effort around investing in America means investing in Massachusetts if we do it right. So that's what that's what that's about. And again, I think the numbers on that, it's you know, three million for a shot to play at, at three billion, or I've heard upwards of four point six billion, you know, when you look at the whole package, um, you know, that that's significant. So we're gonna do our best to uh, to compete as, as hard as we can. Um, and we know, you know, I, and, and the deputy administrator, administrator will appreciate this. It was Massachusetts under uh, a, a former attorney general, uh, not me, um, but a former attorney general that brought that case against George Bush's administration 
that really began and went all the way up to the Supreme Court, and that's what resulted in a ruling that said, you know, we got to regulate greenhouse gases. we got to do that for public health uh, and for the environment. And, you know, I think we have an opportunity as a state to build on and honor that history and that tradition. And I think we've got all the assets and the players who are going to work really hard over the coming weeks and months to make that happen. Well, we've got to work to get this ready uh, for for funding that's going to come what in this in this later in the year in the spring, right? So we we'll put out an announcement in the fall. Yeah. For, for the big money. Yeah. I'll leave that for others. We're here. We're working. We're all working hard. We're moving forward. Uh, a lot of good stuff to do here in the state.